Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? Please excuse my sinuses. They're a little stopped up this morning. Our weather's jumping up and down, and mountain cedar's really high up here right now, or down here. Um, so yesterday, you guys saw I put a couple of comments out there about uh, if I suddenly disappear. Um, I had very strange things happen in the last couple of days. Um, the dog's acting weird. I mean, that's been on and off since last year, uh, e even 2019. Um, people acted weird, weirder than usual. I'm always alert all about that stuff, but it just weirder than usual, stranger than usual. Um, things that I haven't seen before, and that doesn't surprise me because of the, what's going on. And then yesterday, my computer, in both instances, I was in the middle of, right in the middle of doing something. And it just shut off. No warning. No, no nothing. Just shut off. And I did it twice. And I don't know why. There, I have nothing set to, I've never seen that happen before. Just, it, there was no power down or nothing. It just shut off. So, I don't know what's going on. I do know that they can go through your IP and they can mess with your electronics. I didn't notice my phone doing anything weird. However, it did have a kind of a weird update that I hadn't seen before. But anyway, it isn't, it isn't a surprise. And we know if we use reasonable deduction that at some point in the future, probably not the too, far too distant future, they're going to cut all of us off electronically. Um, there are there's already paperwork going through right now in the White House where they're going to go after us. I mean, they're, they're openly proclaiming that they're going to do these things. It's it's ridiculous, but they're being very open about it, and, and the world is not paying attention. Give me just a second here. Excuse me. I had to blow my nose that time. So, it should be no surprise. We already know that this stuff is coming. But they're openly doing this stuff. I mean, there's, there's no there's no holding back. There's no hiding it. They're just putting it out there because nobody's standing against them. Um, it's really kind of kind of kind of sad that everybody's kind of throwing in the towel. We used to be able to listen to Fox News. Fox News is collapsing in on itself. We used to be able to trust people in our elected offices. They're all crooked. I mean, you used to be able to rely on certain things. And I can remember in my lifetime it was that way. People would broker land deals or or equipment sales, whatever, with a handshake. We didn't need a contract. People kept their word. So a person with, with genuine integrity is a very rare animal. The Bible said this was going to happen. Bible said this is how society was going to be. They were going to call bad good and good bad. They were going to go for those things and away from the things that are good. So th there should be no surprise these things are happening. So that's why I put those warnings up that at some point everything should just shut off. At some point they could target certain individuals. We already saw that happen whenever they blocked Trump. There's a very high possibility at one point you guys may click on and go look for my channel and it may not be here anymore. So, some of us have been targeted directly and they're going to shut us down. They're going to do whatever they can. There's a lot of people out there who go online and download um, programs that allow them to access IPs and select whatever uh, IP addresses are connected to that IP for your Wi-Fi and can go in there and target that IP. Or they can take out all of them. I mean, you can go pay $55 and get a program that can allow you to shut somebody's computer down remotely without their permission. Um, it's easy. It's really easy. So, and there's people out there, that's what they dedicate their time to. Funny enough, a lot of them call themselves Christians, yet they still do that and think it's okay. But that's all right. It's funny that that stuff didn't happen until after the video I did about the false prophets posted. 
Satan doesn't want us proclaiming the truth. Satan doesn't want us telling people what, how things really are going to be. He doesn't want us warning people. So he's doing everything he can to stop us. He's using every tool at his disposal. He's, he's pulling out all the stops to try to shut us up and suppress us as much as he possibly can. That's okay. We already knew this was coming. So, like I said, if, if suddenly I disappear, you know that it wasn't by my choice and it wasn't an accident. If my, my YouTube channel disappears, it's because the powers that be shut it down. And I fully believe it. It's probably going to happen. Probably not not too distant future. So we have to prepare for that. So we share as much as we can and get as much truth out there as we can. Because you never know. You just never know. I'm not worried about it because I got my faith in God. And I know my Lord has got this under control. I don't have to worry about it. And if he does shut us down, that just means we're closer. Oh, excuse me. That just means we're closer. And then we're closer to going. So this morning, actually it was led to several different psalms, but we ended up on 52. The end of the wicked and the peace of the godly. And there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that talks about this, in the Old and New Testament, that the wicked are going to have the day. Those that do wrong and, and think they're doing right, they're going to have the day. They're going to have this, this false sense of victory. It's like uh, winning a sporting event, and everybody on the team is excited, but then they come up and say, well, but wait a minute, you guys can't have that trophy because we have to disqualify you because we found this going on, and it was something that violated the game, the rules of the game, and they get their trophy taken away. That's what's going to happen to the wicked. They're going to seem like, they feel like they won. Oh, look, we told you, we told you. No, you didn't, <laughs> because this was supposed to happen. They hate that. Then they get mad. Oh, I can't believe you guys. Well, that's what the Bible says. It literally says this is what was going to happen. I'm just watching it unfold before my eyes. You're proving the Bible right by your very actions. They don't want to hear that. Especially if you tell that to somebody who, who's supposedly a Christian. They, You tell them that the Bible literally says you're going to say that. And you'll give them the scripture. And they're like, that doesn't apply to me. I'm a Christian. Well, it does apply to you because the Bible in those phrases doesn't differentiate whether they're a believer or a non-believer. Just saying. You can be a believer and be wicked. That's why the Bible calls them wicked servants. So, perspective. Got to keep everything in perspective. So, we're not going to worry about these things because it just doesn't matter. I'll give you guys a warning if I see something that pops up. Um, and if something does happen, you guys already know what's going on. You guys are aware of it. Y'all are doing your research. And you're, if you're reading your scriptures, you're seeing these things proclaimed in the scriptures. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. Woke up too early. One more thing I want to touch on before we pray um, is I got an email from someone talking about, I'm not going to name them because it, it doesn't matter, but they were talking about um, being able to get the insights that people like me and others get and uh, being able to see the things that we see. They, when they read the Bible, they don't see those things. And what I told them was this, and I think this is something that would be poignant for everybody. Not all of us have the same ministry. Not all of us are engaged the same way. And that's not by anything we're doing. It's because that's what we were elected for by God. Some of us were elected for a ministry. Some of us weren't. Some people that were elected for a ministry have failed miserably. Some people excel. Each one of us, and I haven't shared this, I did a, a video the other day that was going to be the morning prayer video. It was the morning I went and picked up that equipment, but then I had to go do a, had to rescue my wife. I did a vi the, the beginning to a, another morning prayer video, and I talked in there about talents. And I haven't shared it because it's out of context. But anyway, we all have particular talents, things that we're good at. And it can be different. It's different for everybody. Some of us have multiple talents. Um, my talent is mechanics. 
I'm very good with things mechanical. Um, they had this pressure washer that I'm fixing for somebody, and I don't know how many people they've had look at it. Nobody could figure out what was wrong with it. It took me six minutes, and I had it running. That uh, that tractor, three men, three years, couldn't do nothing with it. In one week, I had it running. Uh, that's my thing. I, I'm very good at those things. I've had firearms people have taken to gunsmiths, couldn't fix, I fix it, uh, on and on and on. We all have a talent. We all have an ability. And those things can be made to serve the Lord. The Lord, when he chooses us, he already knows what talents he's going to instill in us. And those talents are going to be made to serve him. Just because you read the Bible and don't understand, but yet somebody else reads it and sees it, but you don't see it, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just means that it wasn't time for you to receive that. See, the Bible has only opened up to me in the last two years. But I've been a Christian over 20 years. Now, I had, I understood a lot of stuff, but not nowhere near what I do now. But only the last two years has the Bible really opened up to me. I was ready for it. And the more I get ready, a lot of that is separating from the world and focusing on these things. The more I'm ready, the more I'm prepared, the more he shows me. This applies to all of us because when you're ready, when you're ready to receive it, when you're able to handle that information, he shows you that information. And it's just, it's not for everybody. There are some people that are, uh, let's just take the ministry job. Say you're in ministry. Well, some people are given more or their focus is this one particular thing in ministry. Another person, say you have two churches uh, six blocks from each other. Well, the one pastor in this church is going to have a, a better a better ability to preach prophecy versus this other pastor who's going to be better at preaching the gospel. They both are good at being pastors. They both know the word, but that's what their talents are. Not all of us are going to get everything. Um, in 2019, I remember seeing an interview with a pastor. He says, he goes, I've been a pastor almost 60 years. He said, my whole life has been dedicated to this. And he said, in all that time that I've read the Bible, I've never, never seen anything in the book of Ruth. He goes, until this year. He goes, I read it, and it suddenly it was like it. somebody had completely turned the lights on and opened this book up to me. Sixty years. He wasn't ready. And then he was ready. And when you're ready, the Lord will show you those things. I'm still learning every day. I'm still, he's still showing me so much in the Word every day. Bringing up new, I love, I love seeing those things. I love seeing those, those insights and revelations and those little, little hidden details in there. And I love it, absolutely love it. People are so focused on gematria and Bible codes, they need to just read the Bible, because there's plenty in there to find without having to dig in there and try to find something secret. But every one of us has something different that can be made to serve God. Some people. Their ministry is music. That's what they're good at. They may not fully understand the Bible, but that's not for them. Theirs is the music. Theirs is the, theirs, they're a singer. They're an instrument player. That's what their focus is. They may be terrible at understanding the Bible, and they need somebody to preach to them. Other people, they're very, very good at the languages. and can you know, pull apart the languages to find the real meanings of it. Everybody is a little bit different. So if you're reading the Bible and you're not catching these things that some like me or other people are catching and sharing, you're not seeing that when you read the Bible, it's okay. You're not doing anything wrong. My recommendation is, is if you're getting frustrated, if you're, if you're getting stressed out, stop reading for a while. Take a break. Pull back and just be in prayer with the Lord and just relax. And then whenever you feel the Holy Spirit pushing you to get back into the Word, get back into the Word. Because it's not imperative that we all understand all of it perfectly. There are people that understand way more than I do. In fact, most people understand way more than I do. I couldn't do what I'm doing unless the Lord was giving it to me. I'm not that good. My memory is shot. I don't articulate. It, it may sound okay on the video. I don't articulate that well. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I have that isn't desirable. But he gives me what I need to be able to do this. And he does that for every one of us. 
It is by no nothing I'm doing. And the same thing will happen with you. Um, in terrorism, they have this thing called a sleeper cell. And sometimes the Lord will have his people in certain positions. And when he gets them where he wants them, and when these other, say, some people die that were doing ministry or some people move or something happens, he brings up his sleeper cells. And he'll give them revelation and they'll jump out, out there and start doing it. See, over the... Well, all the way back into 2012. Some people even back in 2005 were having... You had YouTube ministries. Back in 2012, people had YouTube ministries and they were talking about these things. Many of their ministries shut down. Somebody died, they moved, something happened. Well, all of a sudden, these people in 2012 come up out of nowhere and start doing ministry. You have, you have YouTubers taking their place. Then you have other people in 2017, same thing. Ministries disappeared, new ministries popped up. Then in 20, uh, let's see, 2017, then in 2019, it happened again. God has sleeper cells. I was one of the ones in 2019. 2020, there were people. He's got people that if, if the ones he brings up can't deliver the message or don't deliver the message, or if the ones he's already brought up die and pass on or move into something else or he, he directs them somewhere else, he always brings up his sleeper cells. So if you're one of those people that's reading the Bible and doesn't fully grasp it, or you're listening to my video or somebody else's video and you're reading that and you're like, I don't see where that is, it's okay. You could be a sleeper cell. You could be one of those people that God is keeping in reserve. So when somebody falls off, you get called up and the Holy Spirit will put it on you. And all of a sudden the Bible will make complete sense. So don't get frustrated and don't get upset. Don't think God's mad at you because you don't understand the Bible. It's okay. Your time is, is going to come. It's different for everybody. So I know there's other people out there who, who read the Bible and don't, don't grasp it. That's why so many people go to YouTubers. But that's also why my message that I was given was to tell everybody to read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible. It's not about knowing it. It's not about understanding it fully. It's that you're in the word. God will do the rest. All you have to do is, is be in the word. He'll show you. He'll, he'll do the rest of the work. But as long as you're in that word, you're safe. As long as you're in that word, you're protected. And I tell you, when the time comes, you may not be able to remember a single verse. When the time comes, the Holy Spirit will call that word up because that word is a part of your life. You can bank on that. I know because I'm speaking from experience. It happens to me all the time. Especially when the Jehovah's Witnesses used to come here. I've been blacklisted by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Because when they would come up my driveway and give me the watchtower thing, I, I loved it when they come. And I talked to them, you know, and I would follow them out to their car. I never let them in the house. But I think one time we did. Um, and I never let them in the house. Um, and they never felt comfortable coming here. And I would talk to them, and then they would start throwing Bible verses out there. And I'd go verse for verse with them. See, I'm a heathen. I'm not supposed to. If you're not a Jehovah's Witness, you're a heathen. I'm not supposed to know the Bible. Yet I was matching people. One of the guys I think was a minister. I was matching him verse for verse, and then they gave him more verses. He got vi he got visibly angry and ran to his car. And he had his window up. He rolled his window up while I'm talking to him. And I'm still talking to him. And I started to follow him down the driveway. They haven't been back since. That's been a couple years now. Satan loves to use that stuff for evil. He loves to use that stuff to deceive people. At that time, I had no Bible verses memorized except for John 3.16. Yet, in that conversation, I was calling up scriptures that I didn't know where they came from. That was Holy Spirit. And he'll do the same thing for you. So, so don't be concerned that if you're not at the same level as other people. God will bring you where he wants you. Trust him for that and rely on him for that. And, and if you're at a spot you can't understand, keep on going. Come back to it later. The Holy Spirit will lead you where he wants you to go. I don't pre-pick these psalms. This Psalm 52, I picked about 30 minutes ago. And it was based on prompting from the Holy Spirit. 
I don't ever pick them the day before. I always do it the morning of. I want it to be fresh and right there because it usually is applicable to what we've been talking about. And the same thing with inspiration for videos. I When I do a video, it's because I had an inspiration to cover that. And that's from the Holy Spirit. I, I try not to take as much of myself out of this equation as I can. So if you're pulling away from the Word and keeping yourself you know, in the Lord as much as you possibly can, if you're staying in the Word, reading, reading, just do a, change your, your tactics on your reading. Do a word study. Go in there and look at the Greek in the New Testament and the Hebrew in the Old Testament. Look at the meanings of some words. Pick a random word and just look at it throughout the Bible. And, and make yourself more familiar with the languages. Change up how you're doing it. Um, do one where you're focused solely on prophecy. Do one where you're focused solely on the gospel. And look at where the gospel is and how you can find the gospel in the Old Testament. There's all kinds of different ways you can study. Uh, when it's time, he will bring you there. And you may spend your whole life not fully understanding what the Bible has to offer. And all of a sudden, just like that, everything changes. It's because God, God's going to put you somewhere. It's worth the wait. Because the joy you get from it and the excitement you get from it is amazing. I am still, I get giddy because he'll show me things. I get giddy when he shows me things. It's like, oh, I never saw that before. That's cool. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's worth the wait. So just hang in there and keep pushing forward and, and keep studying. Change your tactics a little bit. Take a break. Look at some different stuff. Well, the one thing you don't ever want to do is you don't want to ever get frustrated and throw your hands up in the air and give up. Just wait. Wait on the Lord. Because that's what he tells us to do. All right, let's get into some prayer. Let's pray this Psalm 52 to the Lord. And it's titled, The End of the Wicked and the Peace of the Godly. The wicked are doing everything they can to try to undermine God and his word. To try to undermine. I mean, they mock Jesus in everything right now. I There's not a TV show or a movie or videos anywhere that they're not mocking Christ. Guys, more and more, and I've seen people talking about this already, more and more it looks like however the Antichrist presents himself, some at some point either they're going to bring aliens or something, they're going to deceive the world, they're going to bring somebody who's going to pretend they're Jesus and say, everything that was told about me was a lie. This is who I really am and the world's going to buy it. In the Quran, there's actually a prophecy about that. So if you ever want to see some of that stuff, do some Google searches and look at that stuff. But they talk about that in the Quran. See, they think he's just a prophet. But supposedly, he's going to present himself and say everything they said about me was a lie. They're going to do everything they can to refute the word of God. There is, and just like the video I posted yesterday about the false uh, prophet. There is something waiting for them, and it's not very pleasant. Because they're not speaking in truth from God's word. They're going out of their way to speak of their own authority. They're going out of their way to undermine God's authority. And the big push today is, you can't trust the Bible. It's been inaccurately translated. You ask anybody who doesn't know the Bible, that's the first thing they tell you. Oh, that you can't trust that. <clears throat> that was inaccurately translated. When I run into somebody like that, I tell them, oh, where'd you hear that at? Snopes? Facebook? Yeah, those are reliable news sources. Have you ever read the Bible? And they'll make excuses. No, no, no. It's not what I asked you. That's when you have to take authority. Have you ever read the Bible? Have you ever actually done an actual study? And I love it when atheists tell me, oh, I know the, your Bible better than you do. Really? Ephesians 5. What? Ephesians 5. What is it about? I don't. You don't have to recite it. I just want to know what it's about. John 3, 16 and 17. See, nobody ever remembers verse 17. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 and 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Do you know any of those? And they'll look at you. No, 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 that's not what we're talking. No, no, you don't get to control this conversation. You came to me, remember? If you can't tell me what any of those groups of verses are about, you don't know your Bible. I know what those are about. And I sit there and I rattle it off. I told them, no, tell me. Who is Jeremiah? Who is Isaiah? Who is Noah? Who is Moses? 
and and they don't know. Holy Spirit calls all that stuff up, and, and they don't know. It's okay, well, you don't know your Bible. I had one try to do that with me on the on the rainbow, because I had a hat that had Jesus on the top and the front of it, and it was in the, all of the different colors of the rainbow. He says, "Hey," he goes, "I can't believe you got the the gay Jesus on your hat there." And I said, "And this is the atheist army buddy." I said, "Well, first of all, the gay pride flag has one extra color that doesn't belong there. Second of all, I thought you said you knew your Bible better than me." If that's the truth, then you would have known that that rainbow was a promise God made to the uh, people of the world that he would never flood it again. So maybe you need to do some reading. I never heard from him again after that. That's what wicked does. That's what wicked people do. They don't know the truth, but yet they want to try to undermine it. Well, how can you not know the truth? How can you undermine the truth if you don't know what it is in the first place? There's a... a time waiting for them and that's the seven year tribulation that seven year tribulation is to turn israel back to god to, to deal with them after 2000 well actually about 2600 years uh, of denial and to deal with the wicked people the ones that deny christ they will all still be still be here and you don't want to be here Imagine every horror movie and movie with demons and all that stuff. Everyone that's ever been done since 1950 till now. Put them all together and the tribulation's worse than that. Sounds far-fetched. But when you take a really good, take the time to do a word study in the, just the book of Revelation, you see quite clearly just how horrible it's going to be. The, the main thing I find is in the sixth seal, when the people know it's the wrath of Jesus. That stands out to me. Because so far the Bible has said, whatever the people say, this is what the people are going to say about this. And we've heard those phrases being spoken in the last two years. In that sixth seal, it says, they will say, and it says the statement, that's going to happen. That's amazing that they know it's the wrath of Christ. That's amazing. So the wicked will be aware of what's going on. They're going to know the truth. The Bible in the book of Revelation says that they still won't repent. It's a terrible state for them, but that's what they've brought on themselves by their denial of the Lord that bought them. And in this psalm, we're going to read a blessing. To the ones who are the godly, who choose him, who don't deny him, and the peace that is best, that's bestowed upon them. And it also talks about the destruction, the justice that's going to be served on those that would deny him. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up as our God, our creator, our great king, king of the universe. You have given us prophecy. You've given us this amazing word. You have presented to us peace and love and mercy. And you've shown us patience as we work through this world and have to deal with these distractions all the time and the nonstop attacks. Father, thank you for strengthening us. You strengthen us emotionally. You strengthen us with the spirit. You strengthen us with your word. Your word that has within it all the answers to all the questions. It just requires a little effort on our part to find it. We can see in the world today that it's clear what's happening. They're not hiding their agenda. They're being very open about what they're going to do. And your word tells us every bit of that. Nothing is a surprise. They're doing everything they can to shut all of us down, to stop us from posting videos, to stop us from preaching the truth. It is only by your grace that, that we're still able to do this. It is only because the restrainer is here that we're able to do this. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us a platform. Thank you for bringing people up and emboldening them to preach the word, to preach the truth. The sad thing is there are a lot of people who have come into this in, in supposing that there's something and don't preach truth. They preach lies. They preach heresies. They twist your word. 
They have no doctrine of their own. They get it from other people. Consequently, many are deceived. That's that's evident by the subscriber count of these some of these YouTube channels and the likes their videos get. When, when you listen to the video, clearly, there's inaccuracies in there. And if one would merely open the word and look at it, they'd see it. I can't be, begin to count how many times I've heard people quote scripture and then I open my Bible and look at it and say, that's not what that says. That's, in fact, that's not even the right scripture. I don't even know how many times people have given me scripture but this says this, and I go open the Bible and go, no, this is what that verse says. And it's completely different than what they posted. And they just write it off as a common mistake. No, it's not a common mistake. You've been deceived, and you're perpetuating that deception. But Father, you have a time coming when you're going to deal with this. It's the time of justice. It's the time of wrath. It's a time coming when those who deny you, those who deny your word, those who call your word a lie, those who twist it, those who make it to suit their evil deeds and passions are going to re receive justice. It is going to be a, a time of eye-opening. And according to your word, most of them won't receive it. But you will serve justice, and we thank you for that day of justice coming. When the people of the world, those who do evil, those who work for Satan, receive their due reward receive the, the response to their choices that they've made. You've given us such an amazing piece on this because you show us in your word that this is going to happen. What we see happening on the world stage today is no surprise. Uh, I've had people talk about uh, and ask me about um, what's going on in the presidency. And I tell them exactly what is going on. You put Trump in there, he served his purpose. He furthered your will. Now Biden is in there to do the, his part. It's time for your prophecies to move forward, and that's what his part is going to play. Prophecies are going to move forward. You gave us four wonderful years with a man who, from my view, what I've been seeing and how, I mean, I don't know all of it, but just looking at what's going on has changed. You've gotten into his heart. You've changed him. You have made him someone different. And I hope it sticks. I hope he gets saved. Because he dedicated himself. He showed what a true American is. He showed what a true patriot is. Because he stood up for what was right. He stood up for the rule of law. And this world, and, th and I know you did this for a purpose, this world shot him down because they were selfish. And it shows who really understands. A great conversation my wife had yesterday with her boss. And her boss lumps all Trump supporters in one place as they're bigots and racists. She said it was with vitriol and hatred and venom. And my wife said, that's really amazing because I'm, as, as my wife's husband, I'm one of that lady's favorite people. She loves me, literally loves me, says it all the time. My wife told her, that's amazing that you say that because Sean is a Trump supporter. She had nothing else to say. We're seeing who people really are. You're exposing them or causing them to expose themselves of who they really are, where their heart really is, the hatred that is contained within them, not the love of people, not the love of God they're supposed to have. People that are calling themselves Christians, you are causing them to expose themselves for who they really are, for who they really serve. But it's not you, it's Satan. And those of us that you've opened our eyes, we can see this. We know who to avoid. You showed the false prophets out by the prophecies that everybody was given out about Trump on Jan for January 20th. Every single one of them was proven wrong. None of them accepted responsibility. I see what you're doing. You are showing us who we can trust and who we can't. You're showing us in media who we can actually trust and who we can't. You're showing us in our government who we can actually trust and who we can't. I think that's incredible, and I want to give thanks for that. I want to praise you for that, Father, because you're showing us what the truth is, and you're showing us the division that is going on. You're showing us that 99% are going towards Satan, and it is 1% that's going towards you. It is 1% that's going towards what's right. You're exposing pastors. You're exposing teachers. You're exposing self-proclaimed prophets. You're exposing Christians 
who aren't really Christians, you're exposing them all. And it's it's wonderful. It's terrible for them, and I feel for them because they I want them to see the light. But you're exposing them so we know where not to walk. Your word says, the prudent see danger coming and hide themselves, and the foolish walk on and are punished. You're showing us, hey, my people, look. And we know what to watch out for. We know what to avoid. We know who to stay away from. And it is very evident who we need to stay away from. It is very evident who is on your side and who isn't. It's not very many of us. I love what you're doing. I, I, Because you never cease to amaze me. It just, it keeps getting better and better and better. As the more this world goes into evil, the more amazed I am at how much you're exposing it. And how if we would just take a quick run through your word, we could see all these things being proclaimed so clearly. And it is your love and your mercy that you're showing us these things so that we will know the truth. You're proving to us your word is true and you're proving those people who are lying about it. Thank you, Father. Thank you very much for showing us your truth and for exposing the wicked for who they are. We see them. And me personally, I'm avoiding them. Those who claim to follow you, claim to know you, but walk in the darkness by choice. And it's a lonely life. But I've got the greatest friend. That's my Lord. He's always there. Never lies to me. Always accepts me for who I am. Always appreciates me. Even when I fail. And always, always, always helps me. You helped me yesterday. You taught me how to do this mechanic work. You've given me this really weird, unnatural ability to be able to fix these things. And something that nobody could fix in less than 10 minutes, I had it running. And you've done that to me all my life. And I want to lay all the pride down about this. And all of my supposed knowledge. Because it's all stuff you've given me. These are in this word. Let's go into the Bible. Let's let's apply it to what we're talking about. I don't know this word yet. You've shown me so much in here. I've shared things that people were like, "Wow, that's amazing." Other people I've talked to that were pastors, and I'm like, "Hey, did you notice this?" And they never saw it before. You've given me so much. Why me? I don't know. There are other people out there. More people would listen to, but you picked me. And you pick people that were just like me. And you've shown us such wonderful things. And allowed us, trusted us to share them. I take that very seriously. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to preach something wrong. I want to preach it the way you want it preached. I want to teach it the way you want it taught. I want to proclaim it the way you want it proclaimed. You've given me such peace. And like the title of Psalm 52 says, it talks about the peace of the godly. But it also talks about the end of the wicked and what's waiting for them. If we're walking with you, we know those things won't befall us. But the people who are denying you, the people of the world, or the earth dwellers, have a recompense waiting for them. And it's just a matter of a short period of time before it all unfolds. Father, I'd like to pray Psalm 52 this morning. Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor working deceitfully. You love evil more than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness, Selah. You love all devouring words, you deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living. Selah. The righteous also shall see in fear 
and shall laugh at him, saying, Here is the man who did not make God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever, because you have done it. And in the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name, for it is good. And Father, we praise you, and we praise your holy name the name above all names it is a good name you are goodness the, the things we know that are good that are right that are proper all that's all from you it's all of you we don't even fully grasp or have fully seen these concepts completely when we are in heaven we will see them our perception of these things is very limited because our flesh can't take it in its full strength. But when we see you in your glory, we will know these things and know them, their full ramifications, their full understanding of them. What a glorious day. I don't know love like I should love. Because you are love. I don't know peace like I should know peace. You are peace. I don't know glory like I should know glory. You are glory. I don't know truth like I should know truth. You are truth. I should put this in my song. Oof. I don't know righteousness like I should know righteousness. You are righteousness. Father, all these things are you. And I only know them of, in the tiniest amount. Because my flesh insulates me from those things. Keeps, you know, I'm still in this world. But when I stand in your presence, I will know these things fully. I will understand them fully. I will be able to grasp them and embrace them and, be, and then flow through me fully. Because my new body can handle it. And then I will understand. Then I will truly see. Then I will truly hear. Then I will truly know. And then I will truly and fully understand. Father, I thank you for these things you're showing me because it just stirs my spirit up. I thank you for these things because of that, that I'm able to glorify you in this way. To talk about these things, to, to you know, figure out these concepts. And to see the same thing being spoken of in your word. I, I used to wish that I could be like the guys of old who had you know so much more more godly and and I and I just and I realized you already brought me there I realized that you're showing me these things that you're exposing me to these things that you're presenting me to these things I'm so thankful for what you're doing and not only me but others you were bringing up those who truly love you in your truth and you're bringing them up and they're sharing it with others it's such an amazing time to be alive, to be a Christian. I thank you for choosing us to be here now, alive at this time, to see and to experience what we're experiencing, what stories we'll have to tell for eternity. To be that generation that was alive at the time the tribulation was going to start. What a testimony. Thank you, Father. To live in a world where everything, literally everything surrounding us, is smacks of evil. And to still have faith. What a, what a thing. What, what, a, what, a, what a life. What, a, what an honor. A true honor it is to be faithful to the one true God. To know him and to love him and to walk in his truth in this environment. And it's only by your strength and your mercy that I'm able to do this, and that any of us are able to do this. Thank you, Father. We praise your name for these things. Please continue to strengthen us, build us up, make us bold in the word and in the truth. Give us an uncontrollable, unquenchable desire for your word, for your truth, for your love, for righteousness, that we avoid this world as much as we can in any way that we can, and focus on you. 
The truth is only the truth if you're involved in it. And I want you involved in everything. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for teaching us, leading us, protecting us, and loving us. And thank you for having patience with us while we separate from this world. We fight what's constantly trying to drag us down. Thank you for strengthening us to be able to do that. We love you, we bless you, and we praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. Guys, I, I cannot, I can't expound on what I just said. And that, I didn't come up with that beforehand. That came out from the Holy Spirit. That's the inspiration the Holy Spirit gives you. It's not mystical. It's not, you know, something that, you know, big bright lights shine down from heaven and stuff like that. It's something that is ingrained within you because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. And when you start to speak and your spirit is stirred up, especially when you're doing praise and glory and giving thanks, it just starts to pour out of you. You can't help it. As I was saying the words, I was being given the words. They didn't come from me. And the only way you get that is because God opens that up within you. Separating from the world, getting away from those distractions, getting away from the things that lead you away from that. And going towards those things that perpetuate that. Stay in the word, guys. Stay in the word. You don't have to understand it. He just wants you to look for him. Stay in the word. Stay in the truth. Hide under God's wings. And when you're presented with a situation that wants to distract you from that, put your hand up and say, I respectfully decline. And when they start making fun of you, say, I serve a more powerful God than you do. And turn around and walk away. And don't engage in conversation. You will shut down every conversation. They won't know what to say. Because you spoke, spoke with authority. You spoke truth. It is a wonderful thing to serve the one true God, the Most High, Jehovah, in heaven, and in us. You guys have a great calling on your hearts. And this is a wonderful, wonderful glory to have what we have. Let us finish strong. Because I can see the finish line. I hope you can too. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you guys in the next video.